Good morning. Let us pray. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, and maker of all things that are seen and unseen, to you belongs all praise, glory, and honor, for beside you there is another God. Help us now to look into your wondrous word and to understand it. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now this is a coin and a coin has two sides. Two sides. And so does our God. Our God has two sides. 1 John 4, 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. We all, I mean, I've seen a lot of bumper stickers with God is love. And that's good, because he is. But he's got another side. Psalm 99, 9, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. So that's one aspect that a lot of people don't, you know, we don't uh, uh, celebrate as much as God is love. So this, God is love is one side, God is holy, that's the that's other side. So we're gonna be looking at this in this lesson, and we're gonna re-look, visit some of the verses we covered last week. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now we have been covering how the law cannot take you to heaven. The law can't take you. I don't care how good you are. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. So <clears throat> Moses is telling the Lord, because the Lord told him, go get these people out of Egypt and bring them here, here, because we're gonna take them, you're gonna take them into the land of promise. But Moses cannot do that. And so he says, See, thou says to me, bring up this people. But it's, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. So this is what's stressing because the Jewish people. This is the whole time we've been contrasting this. We've been contrasting Jesus with Moses. They love Moses. We love Jesus. Jesus is what, what we love, and that's, what, that's who we love, and that's who's taken us to heaven. The law can never take you to heaven. The law's job is only to point you to Jesus. That's the law's, uh, Moses' job. I know thee by name, and thou hast also found favor. So, Moses, there's nothing wrong with the law. The law is good and holy. Paul keeps on telling us that. But the law cannot satisfy uh, our longings for righteousness. Because if you try, we've seen that, it'll live you. Nobody can keep the law. I just did. See, you can't see Joshua, and Joshua, remember we, told, we were told last week, Joshua's in that tent, but you can't see him. You can't see Joshua, because the spirit can't be seen either. Now, let me show you several verses here, look at this. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And that verse, I always thought, how can a man marry a girl and not know who he married her? He must have been really drunk. <laughs> and that's the, only way, that's the only way I solved it. I said, obviously he was drunk. And in the morning he finds out, who are you? I'm your wife. What? This is not the girl I, was engaged, I wanted to marry. This is not the one. But this is what it says. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, there was Leah. Okay? Now look at this. He didn't see her until the morning. Now look at this. Esther had not showed her people nor kindred, for Mordecai had cha charged her that she should not show it. Here's another, here's another verse just like that. Esther comes into the kingdom under the name of Esther, but her real name is Hadassah. But Mordecai told her, don't let anybody know your real name. 
That's another thing. So it's, it's incognito. This woman, this women come in, and you don't know who they are until they're. It's too late. They're in. They're already in. Now here's another one. Well, let me let me just tell you. When I got saved, I got saved by myself at home, reading the Bible. And I didn't know what happened. Nobody was there to tell me, you are now saved. I just got saved and I didn't know what had happened. The girl downstairs says, Phil, you have had a spiritual awakening. Whatever, you know, I don't know what that is. But nobody explained to me what had happened. And you know, it's amazing how the Lord carried me on. He carried me on because all I know is in, in those days when I first got saved, I would cry at the drop of a hat. It was just, I was so sensitive, so emotional, because I, I, I kept talking to God. I says, I knew you were, this is the first thing I ever told him. You were there all the time. You know, I knew, I knew, I just knew you were there. I just had an inkling that you were there. Um, so when the Spirit of God comes into you, because that's what happens. When you get saved, <laughs> The minute you get saved, the minute you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sin, the Spirit comes in. And if, no, if nobody's there to explain to you what happened, well, you don't know because you don't change it. I mean, you don't turn purple or orange or anything. It just, you just come into some knowledge and you, you really, um, you're going to start growing from that moment on. So the Spirit of God comes in and you don't know who it is, just like Leah. Leah he married the perfect girl and he didn't know that Jacob when he woke, wakes up in the morning it was Leah that was the right girl not Rachel Rachel was a loser you know <laughs> and that's who he wanted that's I said, Laban this is the wrong girl I wanted Rachel yeah 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 you know work me another seven years and I'll give you her too Another seven years? Yeah. So, but the real girl, you know who he's, who, he's, who he's buried with? He was buried with Leah, not Rachel. Rachel died on the road, and he was buried. They're buried in the same place. Abraham and Sarah are buried in Hebron. Isaac and Rebekah are married in Hebron. And Jacob and Leah are buried in Hebron. That's the right girl. And like I was saying a little while earlier, talking with Catherine, um, she had babies. Leah had no problem having babies. Rachel, on the other hand, had problems. She couldn't have babies. And that's a picture of the flesh. The flesh is barren, and the spirit produces fruit. Okay, those are. So, that now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found. Grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I have found grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. So notice the law, this is, remember we talked about this last week. We identify with Jesus, the Jewish people identify with Moses. We're placed into Jesus, they're placed into Moses, into the law. So the contrast is there. So we do, if we're really dead, we should be dead because we died 2,000 years ago. Jesus is now living. We are not. We're living now as dead people. We're dead, but Jesus is living through us to do the will if we're truly dead. But they are, they're trying to do the pleasure of the law, which is impossible. You can't keep the law, but that's what they're doing. So here Moses saying, if I have found grace, in thy sight, show me thy, show me now thy way. And uh, of course, the law cannot find grace. Because we know in Ephesians 2, 89, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the law is works. And you're trying to find works through the law, it ain't gonna work. And this is the law is talking to God. So it's a tricky thing here, because you gotta see it Moses is a law, but here Moses is a man and he's a law as well. But the law is what's trying, the law can never find grace because you'll never be doing, you'll never do enough works to satisfy yourself. Or set, you, the law won't satisfy, be satisfied ever. 
to do what works. So show me thou now thy, thy way that I may know. And see, you never have assurance. If you believe in Jesus, and you believe that he died for your sins, and you're paid for, you're going to heaven, you have assurance, because the Lord says, it's all been taken care of. But if you rely on the law, you'll never have assurance. How much is enough? How, how much is good? If you're doing works, how much good works is enough? How many? Let's say if, if you're trying to save people to get to heaven, how many people must you save to get to people, I mean, lead to the Lord to go to heaven? 15, 20, 30 a year, 45, or one? I mean, how many? Nobody knows. So you don't have assurance. The law will never assure you as opposed to Jesus. Consider that this nation is thy people, Lord. This is thy people. Because remember, the whole argument is God says, I'm not going to go with you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go in the midst of you. This is the argument. Because God says, they made the golden calf. And God says, you're a stiff-necked people. I can't go with you. And the reason I can't go with you is because I'll kill you. God says, if the first time you disobey me, I'm going to zap you. So he says, I can't go with you. And that's why the camp was moved out to the side. That's why that tent is over there. The tent is moved aside. And if you want to meet with Jesus, you got to go outside the camp. That's what that means. So... The tabernacle to be built will partly help the conscience through sacrifices. They haven't built the tabernacle yet. When that is built, that will partly satisfy the conscience. But we know that it doesn't truly satisfy the conscience, because like we were talking, Christina, the, the blood of bulls and goats and sheep can really not satisfy the conscience. The only blood that can satisfy is the blood of Jesus. So this is just a picture it was the whole time it was to be a picture for them to point to be pointing to this ultimate sacrifice that's in, that's in the future but the jewish people what they do is they lock on to the law it was supposed to be a picture not the real thing it was just to train them because right in the future there's a man coming who's going to be the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world that is coming but they missed it you know, they missed it. And so the law becomes, um, what, and, and we've seen how they dance with the Torah. You know, the Jewish people, they treat the Torah like uh, um, very special. Uh, they dance with it, they kiss it, and they, they love it. Um, who will the sacrifices point to? And I already mentioned, they'll point to Jesus. Okay, that's what the, the sacrifices, were go, they're going to be coming when they built the tabernacle, and from the tabernacle are going to come the sacrifices, which point to Jesus. Now Joshua is a picture of Jesus in the Old Testament. And Jesus, or Joshua, is inside the tent, whom they are blind to. They don't see him. And when they came, they killed him, because he claimed to be God. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin, Selah. So God did this through the sacrifices. God covered their sins, but it was a placeholder, as it were. Just like when he covered uh, Adam, when Adam was covered, putting leaves on him, on himself, to, to appear righteous. And God says, that's not going to work. Leaves don't really work. I can just see the first wind you get, you're going to get blown away. So God had to kill an animal and uh, provide him with a covering, an animal covering, a, a skin. So God has already covered their sin, and he was doing this in the sacrifices. They're going to see that how this has been taken care of. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up the hence. Because Moses, the whole time, when the Lord says, I'm not, I can't go with you. I cannot go in the midst of you because I'll, I'll consume you. God is holy. And it's, it's quite a contrast, folks, because for us, see, in the Old Testament, God was upon them. In the New Testament, God's, God's inside us. And it's amazing because we can disobey the Lord 
and still get, you know, get away with it. Because God doesn't leave us. He's inside. We grieve him, but he doesn't leave us. In the Old Testament, he will leave you. If you remain stubborn like he left Saul, and David cried himself when he had committed the sin with Bathsheba, David cried, oh Lord, don't take thy spirit away from me. He really feared that the Lord was going to take the spirit away from him. Um, so here you have, my presence will go with thee, with thee, and I will give thee rest. Now God was going to go with them, but they didn't see the Lord. What they see is a cloud. Remember that? They were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So the, what's a cloud? A cloud obstructs or keeps you from... I mean, like I said, if you ever have you ever driven in, in, a, in, a, in a fog? It's scary, you know, because you can't see really far. Uh, it's not as obscuring your vision. So the cloud is obscuring their vision because Moses is over there talking to the Lord in the cloud, and the people over here in camp they see the cloud. So I mean, the Lord Moses is talking to the Lord, and they over here on this side uh, are talking to the to a symbol. They don't see the Lord. So <coughs> now look at Deuteronomy 133. Who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in and fire by night to show you by what way you should go and a cloud by day. So the Lord guided them and we're going to see that when we get to Numbers how the Lord guided these people. Whenever the tent stopped, they camped. Whenever the tent moved, they picked up the tent and moved. You know, they were following the tent for 40 years. I mean, they were following the cloud. A cloud by day and a fire by night. So that was the Lord. That's who that was. What do the fire and the cloud represent? The presence of the Lord. He was with them. It's just that they saw a cloud instead of seeing the Lord. So, for, with, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. So Moses is saying, Lord, if you don't go with us, we, we won't go. Because they prided themselves that these are the only people on the earth that God has treated them so special. I mean, they're the ones that gave us the book. The Lord spoke through them, through their prophets. They're the ones that saw the Red Sea open. Never has it been done like that before to any people. They're very special in that they were given, but they didn't see him. What they saw was a cloud. See, this is the whole thing. Um, how can we have assurance? How can we know that you're gonna go with us if, if, if so shall we be separated to be distinguished among the earth because we are special they are a special people even now the Jewish people are very special um, because they're the only people now beautiful for situation the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sites of the north the city of the great king God is known in her palaces for refuge and the kings that passed by Jerusalem in the olden days they knew that there was a great king there and that king is capitalized, capital K, that is God, the great king. So they did have, there's evidence that throughout the writings that this was, now not everybody was blind to this thing. A lot of the prophets saw this. They saw that God was dwelling there, the real God, the God of heaven. But the majority, the majority of, the, of, of the Jewish people as a whole, they missed it. <coughs> and the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Now look what Moses is saying here. Remember what we said last week. The people identify with Moses. So when Moses is speaking here, they want to see the glory of God, which is what I said at the beginning. God has two sides. So the Lord says, oh, I'll do this. I'm going to go with you. 
He's been assuring them, I am going to go with you. It's just that you don't, what you guys are seeing is a cloud, but that's my presence. That is the presence of God. And what a lot of teachers and, and scholars always tell you that that kind of glory was the presence of the Lord. But for them, they were seeing a cloud. But for us, when Jesus comes back in a cloud, it's not just going to be a cloud. We're going to see Jesus. Like we saw him leave in a cloud. And the cloud is always there, but we see Jesus. We just don't see a cloud. I'm not happy with a cloud. I want to see him. But they were happy with the cloud. They were happy with the cloud. I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken of, and thou hast found grace in my sight, and I, will, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me my glory. Show me thy glory. The law is saying, I want to see thy glory. I want to see. And the name of God, this is why people that take the name of God in vain, it's a dangerous thing because... The name, if you know me, many people know me differently. Uh, pe people used to know me as a, the artist at the Express News, uh, the art director. Um, people at, at camp know me as the guy that does every, every, every talk I do, I do it with a computer. He's the guy with a the computer. They know me like that. Uh, and, and they know me by, that's my name when they say Phil. That's who I am. My name stands for all those things, for various things. Well, when you get to God, His name encompasses every, what He is, who He is. He's merciful, long-suffering, gracious. Uh, there's so much in that name, and this is why you cannot take that name uh, for grant or uh, in vain. Uh, and He tells us that. And, uh, you only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. The Lord says they, he, they were given so much information, so much. This is why they're going to be held accountable. I mean, there's the, the time of Jacob's trouble is coming. It's in the future. And Jacob's trouble is for them. A lot of times I wonder, you know, it'd be so nice to live in Israel. But actually, you don't want to be living in Israel when the Lord comes. Because he's coming to punish them. He's coming to punish them for, they were given so much information and they abused it. You know, so much information. They're a great responsibility. And they, I mean, they were, they were given the word of God. And when he came, they killed him. Of all people, they should have known. And he gave them so many clues. This is the one. Because they knew, in the Old Testament, they knew there's so many things that are written about him. For example, if somebody is born blind, nothing we can do about it. You're going to die blind. There's, there's no fix for that. If you're a leper, uh, nothing we can do about that. I mean, we, we can only quarantine you and set you aside. That, you can't fix that. Or if you die, that's it. You're done. You've expired. Nobody can bring you back. Except God. They knew that. God can raise the dead. And he did it in the Old Testament. God can cure the lepers. And God can give, restore sight to the blind that are born like that. Which are impossible things. And guess what Jesus does? All those three things and more. He did them in their, in their face. So they should have thought, okay, nobody can do that except God. This man, therefore, must be, oh, good grief, this is God. They should have concluded that. But instead, they says, no, he does all these miracles by the prince of the devils, by Beelzebub. And they're going to be punished for that. They got so much information. And he said, I will make my... Now, catch this. Now, we looked at this verse, uh, 33, 8, last week. Remember I told you? This word, after, catch that word. Because after, when Moses would go to the tent over there, they would walk, watch him walk away in the distance. They were watching him. They were watching his behind. That's what it says. After. They were after, and they loved Moses. But all they could see was his behind. They were watching his behind. And that's what the Bible tells you. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, 
And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy upon whom I will show mercy. Moses has been asking, Lord, give us, show us grace. Show us favor, Lord. We are your people. You said we were going to be your people. Show us grace, which is favor. And God says, I will do this thing. I will do this thing. Um, so I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Israel's not going to see it. God says, I'm going to pass by you. And you're not going to see it. This is what's so amazing, folks. Jesus is God. He passed by them. He was here for 33 years, and he passed by them, and they didn't recognize him. I mean, when I went to Israel, I tell you what, I was walking in Capernaum, and I kept thinking, he must walk right through here. Oh, man, he must walk. Somewhere around here, Jesus walked. He had to. This is Capernaum. This is the ancient city of Capernaum. And I just stand back. I, he walked through here. The king of kings. He walked through here. You know, and there was a little boy there selling wooden fish. I says, how much do you want for the whole basket? He says, I don't know. He says, put them all right there in my backpack. And I, I gave him 20 some dollars. Or something. He was selling those little wooden fish for hardly anything. And so, but I thought, he, he walked by here. You know, um, so I, my, I will make my goodness. I will. Now look at this, folks. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. Thee is Israel. <coughs> I will make my goodness pass by thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. That's Israel. <coughs> and I will be gracious upon whom, to whom I will be gracious, and I will show my mercy upon whom I will show mercy. So God is saying, you're trying to get to me by keeping the works, by keeping the law. That's what, that's what Israel's been trying to do. God says, that's, what, that's like forcing God's hand. <coughs> Lord, I am so good, you owe me. You know, you owe me. God says, no, I'm not a debtor to anybody. He's not going to be a debtor. So and besides, <coughs> he doesn't want you to keep the law because nobody can. He wants you to be perfect. And now that's where the rub comes in, because nobody can keep the law. Nobody can. It's hard as we try. So he says, you're trying. He says, I will show mercy upon whom I will show mercy. That's up to God. He says, I'll do that thing. You can, says, you can't do this by me, you keeping the law. I'm going to be forced to give you mercy and gracious. That's not going to work. So he says, I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. So the only way you can, if you truly want to know God, if you truly want to know God, the best way to do that is by reading the Bible. Because you find that so many times the Bible refers to God as the God of Jacob. He's within the context. That's the only way you get to know him. You get to know him because he's real. He's, he works within a story. And this story is the history of Israel. So in order to know God, you got to know Israel and he's so good and kind our God is so good and kind and you see him you see him uh, and here I'll let me give you an example okay he says this is not gonna work you cannot force my hand to be gracious and kind I decide who I'm gonna be gracious to I decide whom I, whom I will be merciful to I decide God's saying you can't force me you can't force God to do that um, so look at this in Judah is God known his name is great in Israel he is known, when you read the Bible, and you find out how good he is to these people. I mean, look at Jacob. Jacob is a bum. I mean, I tell you what, I would, he would not be my friend. If I lived in the time of Jacob, that guy would be sell you a pair of used tires for the price of a brand new pair of Michigans. He's just a crook. Jacob is a crook. I mean, he deserved getting Leah. Yeah, that's what you deserve, you know. He was a bum. You know what? But the, the, the thing is, here's what gets you. The way God treats him. Jacob have I loved, but each have I hated. I says, Lord, he, don't you know who this guy is? He's a bum. The Lord says, I know, I know, I know. 
but he's he's gonna he's gonna come around. The Lord is so kind and, and patient. And he and when you find out he does that with Jacob, he says, Lord, are you doing that with me? He says, Yeah. Because you're just like that too. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. He says, Yeah, so you find out how good and kind the Lord is through stories like that. You find out. Now look at this. This is a story in Luke 18, 35. And it came to pass as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And here in the multitude passed by, he asked what it meant. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Thou, son of David, have mercy upon me. Now look at this, folks. This is, some, this is how you, when you read the Bible, these are, I think these are like cracks or crevices. That's not, the shine, the light of God shines through these stories. Because here's a blind man, helpless. He says, what's all the commotion about? What's, who's going, what's, what's happening? And the people that could see, they said, oh, it's this guy, you know, the carpenter from Nazareth, you know. That's how they knew him. The guy from Nazareth, he's the, the magic, uh, the, the, the healer. Nobody special. But he turns around and says, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. He says, this is a king. The blind men who could see and the people that could see were really blind. They were truly blind. Because they said he's just a carpenter. And he says, this is the king. Now, how did he get that insight? How did he get that information? That's God. That's God's doing. Because I tell you, folks, when I got saved, it's like I'm sitting in my room. And then it's like God just says, Deep, turn the lights on. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> And I got saved, you know, I got saved just by like that. He turned the lights on and to this day I says, How did you do it, Lord? I mean, because how did how come I understood? I mean, I'm not that, you know, I mean I'm not that my brain doesn't work like that. I mean, how did I get insight? All of a sudden I says, Good grief. And and I went out to the balcony and I says, Lord, I knew you were there. I mean I I you know, as a little boy, like a seven or eight year old, I was walking home one day uh, and I was barefooted and I was walking along this country road and it was so hot. You know how you, your feet get, I mean, the country road, it was hot. It was dirt, but it was still hot. So I would get really close to the side where all the weeds were and walk on the shade because that was cooler. And if you walk on the shade of all those weeds and right by the weeds, there were giant dragonflies bumblebees and bees and all the noise and big old giant sunflowers just spilling into the road and the smell it was I mean I stopped by there as a little kid and I know I mean I still recall that because it left an impression and I thought wow big dragonflies just just hover in thin air and you try to catch them no way there's no way you're gonna catch them the next scene, forward to another 10, 15 years, I'm on a flight deck of a carrier by Hong Kong, and I see the sky, the Milky Way, and out of sea you can touch, you feel like you can touch it, it's so clear. Wow, amazing. So those two scenes, so when I come to know the Lord, those scenes come back into my mind. I says, I knew it, I knew it, you were there the whole time. I just had an inkling you were there. And, uh, and that's, that made me cry, because I says, I've come to know you, Lord. I know who you are. So this man, this blind man, knows him. So these stories that are in the Bible, we come to know that he is a gracious God and of great compassion. He had compassion on this blind man. Now, we need to move on, because... And thou, and he said, thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Notice how Moses is saying, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see your glory. And we've already said that there, God has two sides. His back side and his glorious side, which is his face. Okay, and he says, you can't see my face. And look what it says here. You cannot see my face, and this is important here. For there shall no man, this is what he's talking about, no man shall see me and live. No man can see him and remain living. And this, isn't that what happens? The minute you, you know the Lord, it's because you die. You accept death. 
And that's why this is what happens. Uh, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead. And your life is hid in Christ Jesus. So the minute you come to know the Lord, it's because you died. And if, you don't, if you're not dead, you can't see him. You cannot see them. People say, I want to see the Lord. Well, you got to die. Well, I'm not going to die. Well, you won't see the Lord. <laughs> Simple as that. Because that's what he says. Because of his holiness. His holiness requires that. Because nobody can be, can, you can't do that. Thou shalt stand upon the rock. Now look at this, folks. The table of showbread, that's a picture of Israel. Thou sh these are 12 loaves that were always in there and, and the, the loaves are, are gonna be, they're gonna be broken. They're gonna be sacrificed. Jesus is the bread that was sacrificed, but so is Israel. Israel is gonna be sacrificed as well. Now watch this. Behold, I will stand before thee upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. So Moses, this is a story when Moses says, Lord, these people are ready to stone me. What should I do? The Lord says, look, I'm going to go stand in the front of this rock and you smite the rock and water will come out. So what he's saying, the Lord is saying, I'm going to stand in front of the rock and then you smite the rock. So who is he going to smite? The Lord. That's what he's saying. You're going to, you, and then water is going to come out. He's saying, you're going to smite me. And so a place by me there's a place by me, and you will stand there. Um, this is Israel. So Jesus is the one that's going to be smitten, but so is Israel. Israel is also going to be smitten. Israel is being sacrificed. And that's why, folks, right now they're blinded. The Lord has done that. Uh, while my glory, and look what it says and it shall be come to pass while my glory passes by that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Now look what happens. The, Israel is being placed there. They're being sacrificed. This is why Israel is blind. They are blinded right now. Um, a long, narrow opening or line of breakage made by cracking or splitting, especially in rock or earth. So that's the rock that was smitten. That's the rock that was smitten. That's a symbol of Jesus. But they, the people of God, Israel, are being sacrificed too. Because look what it says. While I pass by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and I will cover thee. God says, I will pass by the righteousness of Jesus Christ and they won't be able to see it. God's going to cover them. They won't be able to see it. God, it. This is God's doing. And he arose and now this is found. First King, I don't know what that R is there for, but I just noticed it. Um, <laughs> First Kings 19.8. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto the cave and lodged there. The Lord passed by. This is talking about Elijah. Elijah in the Old Testament did the same thing. Now here's the thing, folks. Remember the, the strong wind and the Lord was not in the strong wind? The earthquake and the Lord was not in the earthquake? The fire, but the Lord was not in the fire? This is because if you follow that story, Elijah was complaining to God. He, remember when he met the 450 bell prophets up on the hill? And then he comes down, he massacred 100, 450 prophets. And Elijah says, okay, Lord, it's your time to do your work. I did my part, you do your work. Smite Jezebel and Ahab. Did the Lord do that? So he went into depression. He says, I do all this work for God and God doesn't, doesn't do anything. And so he went over there by Horeb and he lodged there and the Lord passed by. What the Lord is saying, he's trying to force God's hand. Do something, Lord. And the Lord, afterwards, he, it was a small, small voice. And the Lord saying, what this shows us, folks, is God is so willing that none should perish. Even wicked people. People, even wicked people, God wants them to, 
um, be saved, as it were. So, so he's, he, he's not going to fulfill Elijah's. He tells him. And look at that. Jonah did the same thing. Oh, and Jonah, was not this my sin when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before thee unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentance thee of the evil. God has says, I'll go tell those people I'm going to massacre the whole city. I'm going to kill the whole city. And, and Jonah went over there and said, y'all, y'all are going to die. Y'all are going to die so long, buddies. <laughs> and, and then, and you know what? They repented. And the Lord says, oh, they repented. Good. And Elijah says, Jonah says, ah, good. Didn't I tell you that you're so good and kind, you wouldn't do it? So you sent me to get these people to repent. Now you're not going to smite them. Because the Lord says, he's good and kind. He says, I don't want anybody. I don't want to kill people. The same thing happens with James and John. Remember when they, Jesus said, they, Jesus was going to stop by at a little town. And they said, uh, we don't want him here. And John and John and James says, Lord, you want us to call fire from heaven? Mess with the whole village. He says, what, are you guys crazy? I didn't come to kill people. I came to save people. And this is what this shows you, folks. God is not willing that any should perish. So they're not going to see him. According as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that, that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. God has given them... God has made him blind. It's God's doing. So whenever you think that Israel, this is why Israel is so special to me. Israel is special. That's all there is to it. Because God is keeping, but one day um, they're going to come around. We're going to have to, I'll, I'll show you this and we'll close here. Um, and I will take away mine hand and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Here's the two sides of God, how we started. I will take away my hand and you will see my back parts. So remember when they were seeing Moses and all they saw <clears throat> was the back of Moses? That, who is Moses? The law. So it tells you, thou shalt see my back parts. <clears throat> that's the law. And that's the only thing the Jews can see. They can see the law, but they can't see God's face. Who's God's face? Jesus. Because Jesus. Look, look what it says here. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the face of God. But his back parts are the law. That means you don't really get to see him. Now we're about to see God is going to uh, proclaim his name, but they're not going to see it. What they're going to see is the cloud. But he's going to give you this name of who God is. And we're, going to see it. we're going to see that next week. This is amazing, folks. Look at this. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, through Israel, Israel is key. Because through Israel, I get to know my God. It's the only way I can see him. I can understand who God is. When I study the, the story of Israel, now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them be the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Because there's a time coming when God is going to flip it. He's going to flip the switch. He's going to do it. And they're going to go, we did that to the master? Yeah, you killed them in Jerusalem. How could we have been so idiots? You were. And they're going to cry. They're going to cry. That's called the, the Day of uh, Atonement because they're gonna pull their hair out, they're gonna throw dirt on themselves, and God is gonna open their eyes. But that's to come. For now, I just wanted to show you that. There's two sides to God, and here they are obviously shown. You can see, if you wanna see God, you see him through Jesus. But the Jewish people, they don't see Jesus. Jesus is not God. To them, they can only see the law. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. We love you, Lord, for your word and what you explain through it. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray and give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen.